Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the 40th episode of the Sira Stories. I hope that you're learning many useful lessons from the life of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the previous episodes, we discussed the battle of Uhud. Today inshallah, we will learn what happened when the Muslims came back to Medina and that why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions were not at rest even after reaching Medina and had the fear of a surprise attack from the Quraysh. So let's start. The martyrs of the battle had been buried and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessings be upon them. Now it was time for the army to return back to Medina. The companions and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned to Medina and the women and the children lined up waiting to see who was coming back and who wasn't. And the wailing began, which was not forbidden in Islam at that time. Now, wailing is an extreme form of crying. And sometimes people used to beat themselves, tear their clothes, and women used to cry out at the top of their lungs, saying particular phrases such as, how are we going to live? Who is going to take care of us? And I cannot live without him. Hence, wailing began all over Medina. And the Prophet wasallam when he got home, said, Where are the women of Hamza to wail for him? When this spread, the women of the Ansar gathered together, came outside the house of the Prophet wasallam, and they began wailing for Hamza. Subhanallah, all he had to do was utter a word, and the believers obeyed instantly. The Prophet wasallam came outside his house and praised them. But then he made a general ruling that from now on, no one will wail or cry out loud for those who have passed away. And therefore, wailing became haram in the aftermath of the Battle of Uhud. The Prophet ﷺ personally visited many families to give comfort to those whose relatives had passed away in the Battle of Uhud. His invocation of Allah's blessings upon them supported them immensely. The husbands of Hafsa radiallahu anha and Zainab bin Khuzayma radiallahu anha were also martyred in the Battle of Uhud. Many of the grieving families bore their losses with patience and took comfort in knowing that their Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was safe and was with them, although they had lost their own loved ones in the bargain. One of the following incidents illustrates the priority that the Muslims placed on the Prophet's security. A group of Muslims returning from the Battle of Uhud met a Muslim from the tribe of Banu Dinar. Her husband, brother and father had all been killed at the Battle of Uhud. When she was told of each of their death, she responded each time, First tell me about the Prophet ﷺ. And the people replied, Thanks to Allah, he is safe. But that woman was not satisfied with the men's assurance and asked to see her for herself how the Prophet ﷺ was. When she was brought to see the Prophet ﷺ, she simply said, Now that you're safe, every grief and sadness has disappeared. Back in Medina, the Muslims spent the night on high alert. After all, they were still in a state of emergency. It was possible for the Quraysh to return and carry a sudden attack on the Muslims. Irrespective of their injuries, sorrow and tiredness, many companions were insisting to guard the Prophet ﷺ. Now let's see what was happening on the Quraysh side. On the way back from the battlefield, the Quraysh began debating. What should be done? Shall we go back to Medina and finish their people? Or should we just go back to Mecca? The Quraysh, even though at the end they knew the Prophet ﷺ was alive, still decided to regroup and return to Mecca. During this time, the Prophet ﷺ was worried about what the Quraysh were planning to do. The Prophet ﷺ returned to Medina from Uhud on Saturday. After leading the morning prayer on Sunday, he requested for a vanguard of volunteers who had also participated at Uhud, ensure that the Quraysh would not return. And therefore, 70 of the Sahaba volunteered. Most of the companions had returned wounded from Uhud, including the Prophet ﷺ, but they forgot about their injuries and joined the vanguard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises these 70 in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran by saying, 
الذين استجابوا لله والرسول من بعد ما أصابهم القرح للذين أحسنوا منهم واتقوا أجر عظيم Those who responded to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after they were wounded, those of them who did good and were mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have a great reward. Ali ibn Abi Talib was chosen as their leader and they set out on Sunday, the 16th of Shawwal, one day after Uhud, without the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Ali radiallahu an to camp at a place called Hamra al-Asad and advised him to see in the distance what the Quraysh were riding. If they were riding horses, that means they would be coming back to Medina. But if they would be riding their camels, that means they were returning back to Mecca. And indeed, they were riding their camels to go back to Mecca. So the very next day, the Prophet sallallahu joined them too and set up his headquarters for three days to make sure the Quraysh do not come back. He ordered the Sahaba to collect wood to make a fire at night. They made about 500 fires that terrified the army of the Quraysh. While the Quraysh were camped at a place called Rauha, 36 miles from Medina, holding a war council. Many of the Quraysh were mourning for the fact that they didn't get a chance to kill the Prophet The main person was Ikrima ibn Abi Jahal, who was in favor of attacking Medina and killing the Prophet But Safwan ibn Umayyah, one of the noblemen amongst them, tried to discourage his people from pursuing this risky mission. At this moment, the Muslim camp was also making strategies. Ma'bad bin Abi Sa'id, who was a well-wisher of the Prophet came to him at Hamra al-Asad and sympathized about the events at Uhud. The Prophet ﷺ asked him to approach Abu Sufyan and use tactics to discourage him from pursuing his evil intentions. Ma'bad, according to plan, reached Rauha where the Quraysh were camping, where the Quraysh were already in the mood and in favor of returning back to Medina with another attack. Ma'bad tactfully demoralized the Quraysh's plan with his description of the anger of the Muslims and their extensive preparation for the new encounter. With this, Abu Sufyan and his friends praised Ma'bad and started to feel scared. They gave up the idea of walking against Muslims and set off to Makkah. Ma'bad, who did Muslims a great favor, sent someone from his tribe to tell the Prophet ﷺ about the situation. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ stayed in Hamra al-Asad for three nights. There was no movement from the enemy, so he returned back to Medina. This expedition is called the expedition of Hamra al-Asad due to the name of the place. Now, was the battle of Uhud a win or a loss for the Muslims? Was Uhud a genuine loss or not? It's common to say it was a loss. Indeed, in terms of how many people died, the Muslims certainly lost. The Quraysh lost around 22, whereas the Muslims at least 70. Let's analyze whether the battle of Uhud was a victory or a loss. Number one. The target of the Muslims was to defend Medina. Were they victorious in this? Yes. The goals of the Quraysh were to eliminate the Muslims, but they failed in all the areas. They thought they would surprise the Muslims, but they failed because Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, notified him before the battle. So in terms of goals, the Muslims were victorious. And number two. Who remained on the battlefield and who left? In fact, it was the Muslims who remained on the battlefield and it was the Quraysh who had to go back. Number 3. The Prisoners of War The Muslims had won but the Quraysh had zero so the Muslims won here. Number 4. The Quraysh did not pursue the Muslims. They were indecisive whether to go to Medina or return to Mecca. Rather, the Muslims pursued them the next day. This shows us that the Muslims had the upper hand post-battle. And number five, the Muslims remained three days at Hamra al-Asad, whereas the Quraysh traveled back. Number six, the issue of the trade routes was still the same for the Quraysh. 
the whole point of trying to go to Syria had still not been resolved. And finally, number seven. From the very statement of the Quraysh, which Ikrama said, we haven't done anything worthy of honor yet. So we can see that the Quraysh themselves didn't consider the Battle of Uhud a victory for them. This clearly establishes, therefore, that the Battle of Uhud, without a doubt, was not a pure victory for the Muslims, but it was not a loss either. Muslims did not achieve the kind of victory they were expecting, but the Quraysh most certainly did not even gain a portion of what they wanted. With this, we will conclude today's episode. In the next episode, we will inshallah compare the Battle of Badr with that of the Battle of Uhud and will explain many wisdoms behind both of them. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel, Zil Noreen. Until next time, Jazakallahu Khair and Assalamu Alaikum.